Okay. Cool. Good deal. <clears throat> Hi, Ron. How's it going, man? So I'm eating... Um, so I was actually going to tell people what I was eating in just a little bit. What's up, cool? Uh, so my, for my breakfast drinks right now, I have a giant, really hot mug of coffee. Um, I have a tall glass of OJ and I have water. Yeah. What's up, Egyptian? Okay, cool. I'm probably, I'm going to cut stream, like go take a shower, clean up some stuff, uh, like clean my kitchen, and then I'll be back. So I should be back again within two hours, ideally. Um, so what I'm eating right now is I had this leftover chili. Um, it was pretty thick. It wasn't, it was definitely way thicker than it was supposed to be. Um, it was almost like more noodles than chili. So I took this chili and I fried it, and then while it was heating up, um, like in a, in a frying pan, I fried it, and while it was heating up, I scrambled an egg with um, a quarter cup of milk, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and an eighth of a teaspoon of paprika, and an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. So I scrambled that, once the pan was hot and like the, um, the chili started like frying. Um, I poured that mixture in there, um, stirred it up real good, and then I put mozzarella cheese on top and I steamed it. So it's kind of like this, I don't know, almost like a leftovers casserole, like breakfast casserole. But it's pretty good. It's pretty good. What'd you guys have for breakfast? Did you guys, what, I guess, what are you guys up to today? Cool. I know Cool's got his uh, football camp stuff. Making sausage and toast? Man, I would kill for like a nice like sausage patty or a couple sausage links right now. Man, that sounds great. I haven't eaten in like 24 hours, so this is kind of had to go all out. Didn't really have a choice. And there is nothing wrong with sausage and toast. Egyptian, what are you up to today? What do you got on your plate? Literally and figuratively. Ron, what's your, like, favorite breakfast? Like, if you had to pick a, a breakfast, what would you say is your favorite? Morning, Adam. French toast. It's a good one. French toast is great. 
I have not had French toast in a while, and I could definitely stand to go for it again. My fiance and I are doing grocery shopping uh, tonight before the big collaborative stream, um, so maybe maybe we'll buy some stuff for French toast. Because we eat breakfast food all times of the day, because our sleep schedules are so wildly different. I know, man. I'm so fucking excited. Would you guys give me just one moment? I'll be right back. coffee is just like really really hot because it's such a big cup and I take mine black I don't put anything in it so it takes it takes a while for it to cool down and so I just grab some ice for it so that I can actually enjoy it with the rest of my meal Adam did you have anything for brec breakfast today we're kind of talking about like what we had today and what our favorite breakfasts are Like, what did you have this morning? And then what would you say is, like, your favorite breakfast? If you had to pick one one thing as, like, your favorite breakfast food. Um, I'm not a person who usually needs to have coffee in the morning. Um, I mean, well, it kind of depends, right? Um, so, like, when I was working my day job, yeah, I, I needed coffee in the morning. Um... But I also have chronic fatigue, so like um, I have arthritis, and one of the like side effects of having arthritis, because um, I had it completely untreated for 15 years, um, I'm going to be doing some gaming a little bit later this morning. So when I get done with my breakfast, we're going to cut stream, I'm going to go clean my kitchen and take a shower, and then, um, and then I'm going to come back for some games this morning. You have bacon and sausage you could cook, but you had leftover fried pickles from Buffalo Wild Wings. That's solid, though. Uh, but yeah, so like uh, I have chronic fatigue, so like I'm always tired all the time. And so if I'm working a day job where I'm forced to interact with people early in the day, yeah, I, I kind of do need coffee. Um, but not because of like a caffeine dependency. I just need something to give me a jolt and, and enough energy to deal with people. Um, because you know, like in a in a workspace setting, especially like you know adult adult jobs and stuff. I'm gonna shut my window. They're doing some landscaping outside. Uh, but yeah, like especially in like office settings um, where it's really boring and monotonous, and people are kind of dumb. A lot of, I, I shouldn't say that. You're forced to interact with dumb people. A lot of the people I worked with at my day job were very smart, very capable people. There was just a few that are very grating and draining. And you kind of need a little bit of a pick-me-up to just deal with the fact that they exist. Um, no, I should be back on, what time is it right now? It's like 9 o'clock right now? I'm shooting for 10. Yeah, I'm shooting I'm shooting for coming back around 10. Cuz I just need to clean my kitchen, hop in the shower and then I'm going to come back. Be a world record for me? What? Like an earliest stream? I've streamed earlier than that before. Only a few times, but I, I have. More often than not, I've ended streams around two or around ten. Yeah, I have a, I have a meeting at two. 
My shower is... Yeah, that's because my hair is short now. When my hair is long, it takes a while. And most of that isn't the actual shower either. That's me doing my hair afterwards. But like, I mean, my hair's like really short right now. It's dirty as shit, but it, it's really short right now. Um, so it doesn't take anywhere near as much time to, to style after a shower. Let's see if I can drink this coffee. Oh yeah. Oh, that's perfect. It doesn't get much better than that. Ooh. Does not get much better than that. You never answered the second part of the question though, Adam. If you had to pick like a favorite breakfast. Yeah, I definitely won't be playing Civ because I have a meeting at two, but I could play some 2K for a while. I was kind of leaning towards 2k. Damn straight, it's hard to pass on a good ass waffle. Haven't had waffles in a while either. Could kind of go for some waffles. I have a waffle iron. When you're here next week, Adam, um, we should have some waffles. We should have a waffle day. Yeah, like a good-ass waffle. I use, like, an actual... I mean, you know me. I cook with real recipes. I don't I do not do a lot of stuff from boxes. I'll, I'll cop out every now and again, and I'll have, like, some ramen or, like, some hamburger helper or some shit. But, like, for the most part, especially if you give me, like, an actual kitchen space like I have in this apartment, I'm making, I'm making real food. Like, I have an actual, like, a wa I have a waffle iron. I have, like, a waffle recipe that I use that makes damn good waffles. Like, I like good waffles. Not to say I won't eat a frozen one, but I don't consider that to be a waffle. That's a snack. I should learn how to use a walk. I do know how to use a walk. So, little backstory. Adam met me um, when we were we were living in dorms together. where they didn't really have much in the way of cooking amenities. And so um, there was actually a lot of things Adam got to learn about me um, in the following years. So who had skill, who had doesn't use a wok? They use a grill. I know how to use both. So Adam had a lot of things that were very surprising to him over the next like few years after after we became friends. Um, for example, the fact that I lived on a farm growing up kind of blew his mind. He did not at all take me for a country kid <laughs> who grew up on a farm raising animals um, and hunting and shit. Yeah, definitely. He 
He did not did not expect that from me. I, I don't imagine probably a lot of you guys would would probably expect that from me. Um, but another thing is, I come from a huge family. Um, I've been cooking since I was like ten, maybe younger. Um, and so I'm actually really good at cooking a lot of different stuff. It's just when Adam and I became friends, I didn't have anywhere to cook or anywhere to store ingredients to cook because um, people trash the shit out of the kitchen. And so, yeah, no, I, I actually know how to use a lot of different stuff. Um, I make I make a damn good stir fry on a grill or in a wok. Yeah, Taco Bell was pretty much our home in college. I mean, we we were we spent so much fucking money there. It was not even funny. Um, but yeah, I uh, I know how to cook a lot of different stuff. Um, I like baking. It's something I didn't get to do in college. Was baking. Um, I like making cakes and pies from scratch. Yeah, T Bell and Tebow's desserts. So T Benator also went to college with Adam and I. Fun fact. And he makes a mean fucking cheesecake. He's also very good at cooking. And and baking. Baking is kind of more his strong suit. I'm probably better at cooking than I am at baking. Uh, but I like baking more. Um, but yeah, no, I do I do love making a good casserole. I like making pies and cakes from scratch. Um, yeah. It's uh, another, another fun fact you guys probably didn't know about me or wouldn't have guessed. Yeah, fish can cook. Yeah. He's not been around as much lately, so I don't know how many how many people in chat actually know him. But uh but fish fish is also reasonably handy in the kitchen. Um I think probably that kind of speaks so ability to cook or or like knowledge of cooking is kind of like um a trait that says a lot about who someone is as a person um, because it involves patience and commitment and the willingness to try the same thing over and over again until you get it right um, and so I feel like that's probably like low key part of why our friend group gets along so well and it has stayed together for so many years um, is not necessarily because we're all good at cooking but because we all have the skills required to be good at cooking <laughs> you know, comprehension and, and ability to understand other people's directions and, um, you know, the drive and dedication and commitment to sticking with something repeatedly until you get it right. And the ability to make do without ingredients, right? Like the leftover chili that I turned into my breakfast today. Um, halfway through making it, I realized I was missing two, two whole ingredients um, that are kind of important for that chili recipe. And so I kind of just doctored it up and uh, made it work as best I could. And uh, it didn't turn out great, but it turned out fine. It was edible. We should have a, th a Friendsgiving, though. That's something we should maybe consider doing. you have a hard time energy wise to make a full fledged meal but um like you can make it but by the time you're finished you're too tired to eat it um i don't know for me i love the process of cooking i love watching raw ingredients turn into something fantastic and and enjoyable my issue with making full on meals with like multiple sides and stuff as I get tunnel vision. So I'll be like focused on the main course and uh, and I'll just dial in really hard on it. You don't know much about cooking? Picky eater, you tend to eat the same stuff all the time? Hmm. That's rough. Um, I find, and I'm not trying to say that this is universally applicable. I wanna, I wanna preface this by saying that. But I, I find that a lot of people who are um, who are picky eaters often 
have just never had something that they don't like prepared correctly. Um, does that make sense? So, like, what what's something that that you don't like, for example, Ron? Yeah, Adam's a picky as fucky. Adam doesn't eat any sauces or condiments on anything, at all, and it drives me batshit fucking crazy. I don't have a lot of patience for for picky eaters as a rule. I understand and I empathize and I like I ain't hating on you, but also like you're an adult. <laughs> Eat like it? I don't know. I also wasn't allowed to be a picky eater. Like, I have a mushroom allergy, and my parents forced me to eat mushrooms as a kid. So, like, I don't know. Like, on the flip side of that, like, it's, it's something that I struggle a lot with, because it's like, if I can manage to eat food that I'm allergic to, you don't, like, stir-fry very much. Okay, so, like... Um, what is your experience with stir fry? Like, do you normally eat it like from like frozen stir fry? Do you have like someone in your life who prepares stir fry for you? Have you eaten it at stir fry restaurants? And if so, like what restaurants? Kind of like walk me through a little bit, like maybe like why you don't like stir fry or what it is that, um, like what, what your experience level with stir fry is. Yeah, Adam Adam likes, you know, like au jus. Like like he'll go he'll fuck up a nice cup of au jus with a with a nice steak. But like if you give him fucking duck. He ain't putting duck sauce on that shit. It ain't happening. Not a big fan of a bunch of things mixed together. Okay. So is it like... That's something that I've never really understood either. It's like... Um, having a hard time with things touching each other. Or being mixed together. So like... Um... The idea with the stir fry is you're bringing together multiple elements that all add one specific feature to the dish. So like, um, you might have like bell peppers for crunch and consistency, or um, you might have um, like tomatoes to add like a, a robust quality um, to it. Hi, Madison. Um, or like noodles to serve as like a something to soak up um, the sauces and the juices in the meal. And then obviously you have like your meat, whatever whatever meat, like your beef or your chicken or your shrimp or what you know what have you, um, to serve as like kind of like the focal point of the dish. Um, and then you know like onions to contribute additional flavor or you know so like everything in a stir fry has to have a purpose or it shouldn't be there as as someone who's made oppressive amounts of wok stir fry and grilled stir fry stir fry is almost kind of like an art form and if you do it wrong you're gonna have a bad time with it um and it is a little hard to get it like completely wrong but like it's still kind of fairly easy to mess up um, like it's it's hard to get perfect and easy to make edible if that makes sense 
And it's not to say that they're doing a bad job, that just might be how they like it. But everyone likes stir fry differently. Um, so like if someone else is forcing their idea of what a stir fry should be on you, you're not going to enjoy it because it's not bringing together the, the elements of a stir fry that you specifically enjoy. <clears throat> You've been craving Chinese for food for my area, but they're probably closed. Uh, there's at least two really good Chinese places um, where I live. At least, at least two really good ones that are open. Actually, at least three. There's at least three really good ones that are still open right now, Adam. So you're kind of kind of gonna have to take your pick <laughs> uh, when you're here next week. Long as they have that chicken you like. Yeah, um, the people who owned that place, so I, I don't know if that place is open, but the people who own that place have another new place also. So they have two, like, two businesses now. So you can, you can go to the one that's for sure open and have guaranteed the chicken that you really liked when you were here. Yeah. But yeah, like like I was saying though, like stir fry is an art form. Um, you, it's like um, it's like someone who's a big fan of Van Gogh, saying that they don't appreciate Monet. Right. So like Monet was a fantastic artist. Um, but might not really be your cup of tea. You know, you might be more into Van Gogh or, you know, I guess they were kind of both kind of impressionists. Um, it's like someone who's a, who's a big fan of, of Rembrandt, okay, um, saying that they don't like art because of Picasso. Does that make sense? So, like... Maybe you're like a, a, you know, you've just never seen the side of stir fry that appeals to you and brings together the elements that you care about in a stir fry. Because it is, it's just like, it's just like an artist, right? Madison, what kinds of rice have you had? Rice is another one that's really tricky. Um, I still got a few bites left and I got some coffee and some OJ left. Rice is another thing that's really tricky, though, because, like, if all you've ever had is instant rice, you're probably going to hate rice. Um, you know, like, if you don't know the difference between a long grain brown, a jasmine, a basmati, a jasmati, like, you're probably missing out on a, a very wide spectrum of rice. Because this is, like, the thing, you got therapy in, like, 30 minutes? Well, I will not be eating for a whole other 30 minutes. See, there's still a little bit on my plate. Um... You've had like three or four different types of rice. Because it's like one of those things, I find like with a lot of things that people don't like, or people who consider themselves to be picky eaters, is they've had one, one or two kinds of something and are completely missing out on, on a way to eat it that's wildly different. People always laugh at you when you say cheesecake is your favorite food. They always say that's a dessert, but like, bruh, it's still food. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. People try to put like food into a box and, and it doesn't have to be. You eat the flavor and texture. Do you know what kinds of rice you've had? There's also different ways of cooking the same type of rice. Right? So like if you you can oversteam rice and make it nice and like a like sticky and gooey. Um, or you can understeam it and give it like a, a almost like a excuse me, a crunchy and, and more nutty quality to it. Um, you can cook it like just barely cook it through. Um, and have like a kind of a middle ground where it's not sticky, it's like loose and fluffy. Um, breakfast potatoes are super underrated. So like, but yeah, I mean like that's just like three different ways you can make any kind of rice. So like, if you're, if you're eating like, um, 
like a long grain basmati, right? That's gonna be way different than if you tried like instant rice or um, like a short grain brown rice. You know, or, or um, a bleached rice versus an unbleached rice. Um, so hash browns are one way that you can have a breakfast potato, but breakfast potatoes usually refers to um, like chopped up and seasoned and pan fried potatoes. So you take like, um, you take a potato, right? Take a potato and you slice it and then you quarter it and then you season it um, and then you toss it into a frying pan and you fry it up. And you'll usually eat those in like a breakfast burrito or alongside like scrambled eggs and sausages or um, you can have that like by itself with just like ketchup. Um, good fried rice is super fucking hard because you have to boil it right and fry it right and you have to get your timing and your proportions right, especially if you're doing it from scratch or like eyeballing it. That is hard to... That is hard to get right. Um, I'm going to finish my food. We've been live for about about half an hour now. But yeah, like, that's the thing. Like... There's definitely ways that I don't like stuff prepared. So, like, for a long time, I thought that I hated Brussels sprouts. Um, but the only ways I'd ever had them was boiled and steamed. And I did like steamed a little bit better, but, like, it, I, I wasn't a fan. But it turns out if you fry them, or if you grill Brussels sprouts and, like, baste them in, in like, butter, oh my god. Brussels sprouts can be absolutely incredible. Or like asparagus, like I only really had asparagus like steamed, um, and then and I thought I hated it because it was mushy and stringy and the contest uh, the consistency was just awful, um, and it felt like watered down flavor. And then I tried them grilled, and I really like asparagus. No, I promise you. I promise you, Madison. So you, you, what you do is you take them and you, you put them in like a, like a wok or, or a, uh, like a wide frying pan. And you um, cook them in butter with like some garlic. Like you saute them with butter and garlic. And, uh, or you can even do it with like um, brown sugar and paprika. Yeah, but, like, see, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, for you, asparagus is great no matter how you do it. For me, I can't really handle it, um... I can't really handle it boiled. Asparagus is, is very tough for me to eat boiled. I had Brussels sprouts with grated Parmesan cheese and baked. Yeah, that's another good way to do it. Right, you take them, you take them on, like, a, like a baking sheet, right? And, uh, so you grease your baking sheet, you, um put like quartered or halved Brussels sprouts um, on the baking sheet. Uh, you can baste them with a little bit of like butter. Um, then you take like grated Parmesan and like some black pepper. Really honestly, that's probably all you need. Probably don't need to go any more overboard than that. Yeah, see, see. And I can handle them like blanched. If you blanch asparagus, which is, um, so like you take like a, like a boiling pot of water and you just toss them in there for a little bit and take them back out. Um, like that's, that's fine. I can, I can eat asparagus just fine like that. But if you boil it all the way through. Chicken? What about chicken? Is there a way that you don't like chicken? Cause there are, there's infinite number of ways to cook chicken. I'm not doing a chicken dance. That's not happening. We're talking about food. I'm not doing a chicken dance. I haven't even finished my breakfast. Yeah. 
Get out of here with that. When I say there's infinite an infinite number of ways to cook chicken, I do mean infinite though. There there are literally hundreds of different ways you can cook chicken. I can believe she's never had venison. It's not like a common thing to eat in the UK. Which is where she spent a long time. And even in the United States, depending on where you live, it's not that common to eat. It's very good. Venison is absolutely fantastic. Uh, but it's not, it's not all that common. Venison has a very unique texture and, and, and flavor to it though. Um, it's, it's very lean, typically. Um, and so, um, just by, by virtue of that, it's very different from most, um, most meats out there and you do have to cook it differently to accommodate, right? Cause like most of, most of our meat that we eat in most Western societies, um, has been raised specifically to have like fat, fat contents or, or like a, a specific like fat ratio. Um, that's not natural because they're farm raised. Whereas venison is typically, I mean, you can, there is farmed venison, but it, they don't, it's not like the same way that, that beef is farmed. It's, it's different. You hate most meats. So even if you did have it, you doubt you'd like it. If you had well cooked venison cooked by someone who like knew what they were doing and, and knew how to prepare it, I, I think you would actually enjoy it. It's very flavorful and very different from just about any other any other meat out there um it's kind of like people who say um that they don't like turkey um and don't eat wild turkey because they don't like farm-raised turkey you like duck really hmm like, as your favorite meat. I've only had duck once, I think. And I, I don't think I had a particularly good time with it. Um, I think we... I want to say we got there late to an event or something. And, and so, like, the... It wasn't... Um, it started to get cold a bit. So I didn't, I didn't care for it. Brisket is probably my favorite meat. But I'm also an Irish boy from an Irish family. So... You like dark meats? Sure. I'm definitely... I definitely tend to prefer, like, light meat. White meat. But, uh... Man, I will fuck up a steak. Um... I like lamb. Lamb is probably something that doesn't get enough love. Um, but every time I eat it, I feel bad for the poor bastards who had to raise the damn animal. Because I've had to raise sheep, and they are about as stupid as they come. Sheep are probably the most frustrating animal I've ever had to raise. Not even probably. Sheep are definitely the most frustrating animal I've ever had to raise, and it's not even close. Lamb is the only chunk of meat you actually want to order. Lamb's good. Lamb's good. It's, it's very flavorful. Very tender, as a rule. Unless you royally fuck up cooking it. Your friend's name is Lamb. You don't eat her. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> I 
Damn it, Madison. <laughs> Ugh. All right, well, my food's gone. My coffee's almost gone. My orange juice is gone. Oh, yeah, I kind of went over this earlier. So I had some leftover chili um, that I got halfway through making it and realized that I was missing um, a couple of key ingredients for the recipe. <laughs> so I did my best, and it ended up being like more noodles than chili, which is the exact opposite of how it's supposed to go. And so um, I had, anyway, long story short, I had leftover chili. Um, I took a pan and I fried it up, fried up my chili. And then I took an egg and I scrambled it with a quarter cup of milk, a quarter teaspoon of salt, an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper and an eighth of a teaspoon of paprika. And I scrambled that. Um, when the pan got hot and the, um, the chili started frying in the pan, um, I poured the, the eggs in, stirred it all up, um, and then I put mozzarella cheese on top of it and steamed it for a good while. And then um, that's that was my breakfast today. I turned uh, turned leftover chili into this egg dish, and it was really good. I really enjoyed it. I'm out of chili now, but uh, it was really good. Ate almost four thousand calories last night. Jeez. But yeah, I'm probably I'm gonna go for we'll go for like another what three minutes or so. We'll go for like another three minutes um, and then we're going to raid who's live right now. I'm going to raid this dude Rybone, I think. Um, he's trying to hit affiliate. I haven't been able to watch a lot of his streams with volume, so um, hopefully this works out okay. Um, I've kind of been following him for a while. I know he plays like Call of Duty. He's plays, playing Resident Evil right now. Uh, but I kind of wanted to give you guys a couple couple more minutes to just talk to me and, and ask any questions you might have. I know it's been <clears throat> it's been three days now since I've streamed. Um, my arthritis has been kind of killing me. But uh, but yeah, we uh, should low key get dressed for your psychiatrist, but. Eh. Yeah, you should probably probably get dressed for that. Yeah. Pretty slow eater. You don't know why, but you can't help but eat things quickly. Um, I enjoy eating slow because for much of my life I had to eat very quickly. Um, so now as an adult I tend to take my time with things. Um, I also, in my family we have an acid reflux problem that like burns the lining of our sar sar uh, burns the lining of our esophagus like kind of down towards our stomach so if we eat <clears throat> as I've gotten older if I eat too quickly it kind of like bottlenecks and it gets stuck in my esophagus for a little while and I have to like give it time and, and fluids for it to, to go down it's kind of fucked up um, but with like diet control I've got gotten my acid reflux reflux stuff really under control and especially like if I'm talking with people and like actually hanging out with people I, I tend to eat slower too you miss me and I didn't say it back I thought I did didn't I I've missed you too I have whether I said it earlier or not I have All right, well, we're going to start this raid, um, start the raid timer anyway, and if you guys could do this guy and me a huge favor and just, like, say hi to him um, on my behalf, um, I should be back in, with any luck, about an hour, so we're, we're going to shoot for 10.30 Central Space, Central Standard Time. I'll be back playing some, uh, some 2K, so... 
anyway, I will see you guys in about an hour. Let me let me see like seven. Let me see like seven seven viewers ready to raid. At least seven. There's seven. Can we get back up to seven? There it is. See you guys in an hour. <laughs>